Yo, what's going on everyone? This is Austin from Call On Our Shot and we are back for Sunday's Best Bets in the NBA. It is October 24th. Let's wrap up the weekend, hopefully making some money because yesterday we had just four plays. We went one and three. The Clippers didn't show up after the first quarter. Timberwolves scored 13 po or 15 points in the third quarter and Lonzo, well, Vucevic had 19 rebounds. So what can you do about that? But that's the NBA. We're going to keep getting back at it. You can't make money every single day, but we're going to certainly try our best. We're going to get back after it. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We passed 11,000 subscribers. You guys have been killing it. Can we hit 12? We did that and we went from 10 to 11K in less, almost a week and one day. Can we beat it to 12K? I believe in you guys. So smash that subscribe button. Click that like button too if you enjoy. And also, I have my two NFL best bets. One with spreads and over-unders and player props. The other with parlays. Both videos will be linked at the end of the channel. At the end of the video. Let's get after it. Who are we starting with? Starting with the New York Knicks. Minus six and a half first half. Minus 115 at BetMGM. Um, have, I have a question for you. They're taking on the Orlando Magic. And my question to you guys out there, have you watched the Orlando Magic play basketball? If you have, I'm sorry. You might need some LASIK because they are an absolute abomination of an NBA team. The first game of their season, they were down 12 points to the, Serps, to the San Antonio Spurs at halftime. Well, they said that's not good enough. They went down by 30 points in their last game against this very New York Knicks team. And now I don't expect the Knicks to shoot them shoot as well as they did on that game. And they shot 54 three-pointers against their in their last matchup versus Orlando. Now, I don't expect them to shoot that many shot attempts from three or even shoot that well, but... They're the much better team in this matchup, and, and they're at home playing at MSG. For what it's worth, last season, the Knicks were 49-21-2 against the spread in the first half. By far the best in the league, 70% of the time, and I think they're the much better team. They're at home. You got the Magic, who are terrible on the road, and they're, that will impact their role players, who are even not even playing that well to begin with. So I'll ride the home team in this matchup versus a very, very, very bad Magic roster, and if they want to cover first half, so be it. But we're riding with the Knicks, minus 6.5 in the first half. If you want to take the full game, go for it. It's 12 and a half points, but I'll just do the first half to be safe. Now, moving on to some player props because I have another spread, but we'll talk about it at the end. Player props. What is this one? At? One and a half units. Anthony Davis over 35 and a half PRAs. Now, I rode Anthony Davis on Friday, and he, he treated us nicely, so we're riding with him again this week So or on Sunday. Now, the Grizzlies, they, they don't really threaten me at all. I mean, you look at them. They won against the Clippers last game. But the Clippers don't really have any inside threat. So I'm not really going to compare their numbers to that because you got other guys. I mean, Paul George had a great game, but that was about it. Marcus Morris was in. But you can't stop AD, and I don't think they have someone that can. I love Jaron Jackson Jr., but sorry, my friend. This is Anthony Davis, and this line is still too low. So that's why I made it one and a half units because if you're, if you're Frank Vogel, are you going to put out Dwight Howard out there or just goes out there to get his fouls up and then he says, all right, I'm out of here? I don't think so. You're looking at AD and he's going to play a lot of minutes at center. So I think you got an advantage here on the rebounds and the assists. I mean, if you put Steven Adams on him, that's going to be abusive. And Jaron Jackson Jr., I just don't think can guard him. You're looking at the Grizzlies allowed 32 PRAs in the first ever game to Evan Mobley. And Jarrett Allen, his teammate, had 30 PRAs of his own, going 11 for 11 from the field. Anthony Davis, the team's leading scorer, I believe. I'm not sure if LeBron might have him beat, but he's averaging 27.5 points a game, 12.5 rebounds, 2.5 assists per game. He's a beast. He had 46 PRAs in their first game, 39 PRAs last game, shooting just 6 for 18 from the field. You look at the Grizzlies, they aren't necessarily the best defensive team, giving up over 110 points in both their games this season. And last season when AD took on the Grizzlies, he had 45 and 41 PRAs. I'm locking it in on Sunday, counting it in. Anthony Davis, over 35 and a half PRAs. Move on to another one that we're going to make one and a half units because I think we got a good edge here. Christian Wood, over 30 and a half PRAs, minus 115 on FanDuel and Caesars. Now, I expect this line to change. This should not be 30 and a half. Maybe it's 32 and a half. And I like it. That's why I said playable to 34 and a half. Because I think this is the wrong line. You look at Christian Wood. He dominated on Friday for us. Just like Anthony Davis. He had 31 points, 14 rebounds, and an assist in a blowout win over the Thunder. And in game one of, the, of his this season, he had 28 PRAs. Didn't really shoot it all too well, but it was a blowout loss. So he didn't play as many minutes as I think he could play. Now, today he gets a great matchup versus a Celtics team that I don't really know what the heck's going on in Boston. But you look at the Celtics, they start Robert Williams. They start Al Horford. Yet they give up a ton of rebounds. Now they give up 25 points and 13 rebounds to Scotty Barnes in his second career NBA game. And his teammate, Precious Achua, 
yeah, 15 points, 15 rebounds as well. So I think the biggest edge here might be on the rebounds, but they also gave up in their first game 11 points, 17 rebounds to Mitchell Robinson. Obviously, Julius Randle had a game over 35 points, but granted, it was a double overtime, so I don't necessarily want to say, you know, Christian Wood is dropping 35 points alone tonight, but I think the biggest edge here is rebounds, but I do think he gets his points. I mean, he's shoot, been shooting a good amount of times, basically the number one shot attempt guy on this Rockets roster, so I'll go with PRAs. I'm locking it in. I think Wood is a great game. And all around, I think they hang around with the Celtics at home who just have not looked good so far after getting blown out by the Raptors in their last game. Now we're moving on to another player prop. Harrison Barnes over 16 and a half points, minus 110 on FanDuel. If I told you Harrison Barnes was the number five leading scorer in the NBA, would you probably drug test me? Yeah, probably, because he's had an absolutely great start to the season. He started with 36 points in their opener versus Portland, who basically left him wide open. So it was just shooting practice. And then, but then he stepped up, scored 25 points against a very good Utah Jazz team. But the big, big thing I love here, his shot attempts. He has shot 20 times and 19 times in those two games. That's great. If you're going to give me an over on a guy that's going to shoot 18 to 20 times and you're giving it a 16 and a half, I'll take it every single time because I, if, I, I think... Any NBA player is good enough to hit that over just with that many shot attempts. But you look at the second best part, we got a revenge game on the hands as he's taken on his former team, the Golden State Warriors. And in his last five games versus Golden State, yeah, he's gone over in four of them. And the only one he missed, he went one for 10 from the field. So there's really not much you can do about that. It's a make or miss league. If he's going to miss all the shots, then so be it. The bit, the, but the biggest thing I also think, in those four games that he went over, he didn't shoot more than 12 times in, in three of them. So if you're looking at a guy, he's hitting this over, but like going at 18 to 21 point range, but he's only shooting 12 times. Now, what happens if he shoots like 18, 20 times like he has been doing so far this season? Yeah, he's probably going to cash this over pretty easily. So I'm taking Harrison Barnes with a little bit of confidence. Now, I'm only putting one unit on him because... It is Harrison Barnes, so we're not going to necessarily lose 1.5 units. I like Christian Wood and Anthony Davis a little bit better, but revenge game narrative, I'm in on Harrison Barnes tonight, over 16.5 points. If you want to take his rebounds too, go for it, but I'll just isolate to the points. I think that's the best value you can find. Now, here's my last play, and I talked about it earlier. It's kind of a lean at the moment because I don't know injuries. So if we're going to talk about the 76ers. I'm either taking the Thunder team total under, who which cashed in the first game, first video of the season, or the 76ers minus eight and a half. But the problem is, I don't know who's active today. Embiid could be playing, and that would be why I would probably lock this in. I know Andre Drummond is doubtful, but I'm not taking a Sixers team to either one play defense or two cover a spread if Joel Embiid's not out there. Nope, you got the wrong guy. But I think the if you look at the Thunder, they started the season with 86 and 91 points. So pretty good for underbetters out there. And now they get to face a, a pretty good defensive team in the Philadelphia 76ers. Now they did give up 114 points, but that was still a good good Brooklyn Nets offense, and then they gave 97 to the Pelicans. In two matchups versus OKC last season, the final scores were 117 to 93 Sixers and 121 to 90 Sixers as well. So holding them under 93 points in both of the games. Now OKC, still a team that's trying to get it together. It's the Shea Gale, just Alexander has not played well all, all too much. Granted, they've been blown out in both of their games, and Josh Giddy and the other guys are still not getting into the groove, but it's early on into the season, but they lost their first two games by 19 to the Jazz and 33 to the Rockets. So give me the Sixers in this one, assuming Embiid plays because I do like them a lot, a little bit more than I like this Thunder roster. But I'll, I'll update the pinned comment down below as well as tweet it out on Twitter at Colin Our Shot. So make sure you're following us there just once I know exactly who's starting because I'm not I'm not taking a Sixers team without Embiid. Nope, you got the wrong guy. But that'll wrap it up. NFL Best Bets will be linked on the screen. We got a plus 12,000 long shot parlay. So go check out those two videos. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed and click that like button too. We appreciate it. This has been Austin. I'll catch you guys again tomorrow. Peace.